This is Tacos El Pastor, but different. It's part of a video series I'm calling The Same But Different. It's where I take an already existing dish or concept and I'll adapt it in some way, put my own spin on it. And then further down the road, I'm gonna adapt that dish. I'm gonna put a spin on the spin. Whilst always making sure that the end result is still recognizable to its inspiration when put side by side, all in an effort to examine the creative process in the kitchen. I think that this is the perfect content for this channel because I am just like a normal human, but different. Tacos El Pastor in English means shepherd's tacos, but they're made with pig. And if you've seen my video on shepherd's pie, you'll know that shepherd's pie can utilize either lamb or beef. It doesn't matter. What's that? Shepherd's salad. It's got shrimp in it. It doesn't matter. But it's got shrimp in it. If you want to make traditional and authentic tacos al pastor at home, you will need a vertical spit. I haven't got a vertical spit. You've probably not got a vertical spit. I imagine the richest homes in America don't have vertical spits, just sat next to the Keurig machine. I chose to use a braised pork shoulder, which is not only cost effective, you get a massive piece for like $12, it's also bloody delicious. This is Tacos Al Pastor 1.0, rolling with the food. This is just your basic braise. I used a um, slow cooker. If you want to use what traditional Al Pastor tacos are cooked on, then you're gonna have to buy one of these. But you're pretty limited to what you can actually cook on one of these vertical spits. Don't get me wrong, I would love one. But there's only so many toys that one man can have. Get your aromatic vegetables all nice and browned, bringing out those natural sugars. Transfer to the stock pot and then get your meat on this nice big slab of piggy. This beautiful piece of meat here is 2.5 pounds of pork shoulder. I bought at Whole Foods for about $12 which is amazing really, because you can make four or five meals out of the end product. Add enough water to the slow cooker to immerse the big chunk of pork. Seal the pork on all sides and give the cinnamon sticks a little sizzle in the pan. Then I'm gonna give the bay leaves a quick sizzle in the pan to bring their flavor out as well removing the plastic container because plastic containers don't have a very good texture deglaze the pan to lift the flavors off i like slow cooker because it's convenient it remains a constant temperature which is really ideal for braising meat and you can just leave it on the counter and it doesn't heat your whole kitchen up for hours like it would do if you are in a pot roast in the oven so what is a good salsa for tacos al pastor the answer on the wiki page is it's purely optional, but my philosophy is wherever there is heat, there must be sweet and or sour. This salsa has both sweet and sour. Some sweet from the sun-dried tomatoes and fire-roasted tomatoes, and some sour from some red wine vinegar. Vinegar has the uh, added uh, bonus of being acidic, and acidity uh, brings out other flavors in the food. Just simply de-seed and de-stem everything um, and give them a rough chop if they need to fit in whatever you're using to blend. Uh, there is, There are two elements to this salsa that will not be blended in with everything else. And that will be the sun-dried tomatoes, uh, for one, to give the salsa some texture and some bite, and also the cilantro. The reason for the cilantro to be chopped separate and not just chucked in and blended up with everything else is because it seems to take on a more of a bitter, grassy taste when it's all blended up. But when you uh, put it in chopped up like this, and as you can see, it doesn't take science to tell you that that's gonna be much more appetizing um, as a salsa than it would be if it was like pulverized. A Little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper and she's done. The same basic principle as the salsa, um, I used some goat's cheese and sour cream to balance everything out and uh, cool the heat down a little bit. After tasting the pork and the salsa together, I realized it was uh, quite spicy for my liking, so I put some uh, honey in this and it 
went together with everything else absolutely beautifully. I recommend you do it as well. Mix everything up with a fork. Don't try and use a uh, mechanical whisk because the goat's cheese will go bloody everywhere. It helps if you've got the goat's cheese at room temp. Give the little lemon a little roly-poly so I get the juices flowing. And uh, uh, here's a pro tip. Don't squeeze lemons straight into something unless you want to be picking seeds out for the next 20 minutes. Uh, use a sieve like this. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. You might be asking, do you salt everything? And the answer is, well, maybe. Uh, you have to remember that uh, when you put salt into any particular dish, you're not trying to taste the salt. The salt is merely there so that you can elevate the other flavors in there. So you taste it. Are you getting all of the flavors that you want out of it? The cheesiness, the creaminess, the, the sweet, the acidity and all of that stuff. And if those elements need to be brought up, then different ways of doing it is uh, with either salt or some type of acid, uh, especially lemon juice. In fact, sometimes just lemon juice can do the trick. But this got uh, mixed up together very nicely with a spatula. It was a beautiful consistency. So depending on what method you use to braise the pork, could be overnight, like mine. It should come out all fall into bits like this. Look at that. All of that connective tissue and collagen has been melted away and you're left with this tender, juicy uh, pork meat. Um, I separated the meat into two lots of 500 grams, or I think that's about a pound, and froze the rest. You can use it for all sorts of different things. Um, you could even make uh, pulled pork al pastores or just pulled pork in, in general but you might have some leftover pineapple as well you might know by now if you've seen any other videos of mine that I love this uh, method of slicing garlic it uh, gives some beautiful texture to whatever you put it in uh, especially when you're sauteing it same with the jalapeno I'm gonna get a nice thin slice on these and saute them both off in the pan. Just sweat them down. True Authentic Al Pastor has a Abu Dhabi marinade and a coloring agent called Acciote or Acciote. Neither of which makes much sense in the context of this version of it. The dish itself actually comes from Lebanese immigrants and is based on a shawarma or dana kebab as it's known in some places. One thing is for sure, one day I want a vertical spit in my bloody kitchen. After you've sweated off the garlic and jalapenos, add the pork and the spices. Most of these spices are true to the taste of al pastor. And here goes my second attempt at squeezing lemons into something and picking seeds out. Uh, some people just never learn, do they? I'm gonna add these cinnamon sticks from the stock back in and some of the stock itself after I've allowed the meat and spices to saute for a little bit. And then this is just gonna simmer away uh, and infuse a little bit of salt, you know why, and pepper. Give it a taste. And it was good. Time to grill the pineapple. I've got a little uh, cast iron stovetop grill uh, that I've used millions of times. Highly recommend it. Uh, give the pineapple a little turn so you get that crisscross pattern on it. It's not so much for aesthetics, in fact it's not even for aesthetics, it's just for more caramelization. And then some beautiful fresh oregano. Uh, but in America you'll know it is oregano. No wait, oregano. Yeah, that's it. The reason for leaving the skin on while I grill it is because once I start to cut it up, it, it's a lot easier to take the skin off when you're getting it into little pieces like this, instead of trying to go round and round around the pineapple. Chop this up and chuck it in. I definitely got my money's worth with these cinnamon sticks, but it's time to take them out and fish the bay leaves out because it's gonna be ready to serve very soon but first it's time to give the tortillas a little toast in i like to butter one side of the tortilla and uh, just toast the other side um, this gives it a nice little juxtaposition and i like to put the fillings on the the drier side of the tortilla so, but that's just me if you like this video please like subscribe and please share it if you uh, know somebody that might like it 
these are the ways I first tried plating these things up. And whilst they look all right, they had a tendency to like spill out all over the place and were difficult to eat. Um, so I went with a more of a sort of refined looking taco, if you will. I wasn't trying to be posh or anything, but it, it definitely suited it much better and uh, was a lot easier and more enjoyable to eat. I think there's a lot to be said about the appearance of food and its correlation uh, with tastiness. But I feel like the goat cheese and lemon and honey and the salsa were enough to give it a slight departure from its inspiration. But when I approach this dish next, I think I'm going to really uh, lean heavily on the Lebanese background of it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Alan Watts said, in the world, there are prickly people and gooey people. Without prickly people, gooey people wouldn't exist. And without gooey people, prickly people wouldn't exist. Did I say that twice? The reality is that it's all prickly goo and gooey prickles. Makes sense, right? Point is that whatever you are and whatever you do, just do it. Carve your own way, do your own thing. Make your own tacos. Do you want to make shepherd's tacos with chicken? Do you want to make a sandwich with chicken and call it a shepherd's sandwich? Go for it. Do whatever you want. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.